Jordan Schilfer. Boy, monster lead for Hernandez at second as Ruiz takes ball one. So the Dodgers hoping not only maybe can they steal a base, take a base, but also that it could manifest itself in some lapsed concentration for Lester. Did he walk Hernandez at the beginning because Hernandez kept taunting him with fake bunt attempts? And is Hernandez messing with him now out at second? 1-0 pitch misses for ball two. And David Ross is going to head to the mound. And I think David Ross, or excuse me, John Lester feels like those first two pitches, borderline pitches, the first one at the top of the zone, maybe up a little. That one, I think he felt like maybe caught the inside corner. Both calls go the way of the Dodgers. Ross back behind the plate, Baez and Russell heading back to their position. So the Dodgers, it's obvious what the game plan is. And so far, very early, it's having an effect. And Hernandez just keeps getting, keeps getting further and further away from second base. There's the 2-0, and it's ripped foul down the third baseline by Ruiz, 2-1. You're describing it accurately with Hernandez is so far off at second base, and Baez is standing on the base. If Lester was capable of throwing the second, he could pick him off easily. If you're Kike Hernandez right now, you should realize they're not throwing. I'm out here in no man's land, but the point is you're out there now. Go. Two and one the count, not going. And the pitch out, so a called strike, a late ball by Alfonso Marquez. So it's not three and one. It is two and two. And Dan, I think it was the right call. It was just such a missed spot. They wanted to come in with the fastball. And Ross reaches across the plate. And it's a borderline pitch, but I think it does catch the corner. The two-two now to Ruiz. And a swing and a fly ball to right field. Backpedaling Hayward. He's got room in front of the warning track to make the catch. Hernandez will tag at second and come to third. Seeker stays at first. And I know you can't replay an inning with a different event happening in the middle, but boy, if Hernandez had stolen third, that fly ball brings over a run. Well, I think there are a, a number of opportunities so far for Hernandez to steal, both when he was at first base with Seeker up at the plate and then again at second. Yeah, I mean, I, He's one of the few guys I've seen that has the courage to get out there in an uncomfortable spot. But the point is, when you get out there now, it's time to go. First and third, two down, one nothing Cubs, and the batter is Howie Kendrick. One for eight so far in the series. The pitch, a swing and a bouncing ball to third, not hit hard. Bryant has it in front of the bag and throws out Kendrick to end the inning. So the Dodgers get in ahead of Lester a little bit, but they can't cash in. A walk, a hit, and two men left on and the Cubs lead one to nothing at the end of an inning. This is the National League Championship Series on ESPN Radio, presented by AutoZone. A dead battery can leave you stranded, so get yours tested for free during Superstart Battery Month at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Need a replacement? Purchase a Superstart Extreme or Superstart Platinum battery and get up to $25 in O'Reilly gift cards after a mail-in rebate. O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Limit supplies. See store for details. How many guys? Three? Motor oil is a simple concept. But some oil brands are overcomplicating things. Like adding deposit shields or injecting titanium in it. Sounds like a titanic load of BS to me. But we at Quaker State put motor oil in our motor oil. It works hard, protects your engine, and keeps it running for a long time. Quaker State. Nothing complicated. Just damn good oil. Head over to Advanced Auto Parts for great deals on Quaker State. These days, you got to have a side hustle. And I'm not talking about a 9 to 5. I'm talking about driving with Uber. That's the ultimate side hustle. Want to earn extra money? Drive with Uber. Have a few spare hours here and there? Drive with Uber. You like the idea of being your own boss? Drive with Uber. You make a great boss. You're probably driving right now. You should be earning. If you want your car to start making you money, then visit uber.com slash drive now. Get your side hustle on today. That's uber.com slash drive now. 
Wondering if your old cooling unit is going to squeak by this summer? Don't. With up to $1,650 in available cool cash rebate, there's never been a better time to explore the full line of carrier innovation. And your family savings may continue for years down the line. Ask your dealer how an efficient home comfort system by carrier can reduce your monthly energy bills through the life of your system. But don't wait. Your cool cash window closes soon. Carrier. Turn to the experts at 1-800-CARRIER or carrier.com. Showman and Aaron Boone with you on ESPN Radio. A one to nothing lead for the Cubs after a very eventful first inning, top and bottom. It'll be Addison Russell, David Ross, and then John Lester against Kenta Maeda here in the second. The, uh, the uh, Cubs are out of getting their run on an RBI double by Anthony Rizzo. The Dodgers had opportunities, two men on, but as much as they messed with John Lester, they didn't actually run on John Lester. Here's the first pitch to Russell. And breaking ball misses for ball one. Russell with a big night last night. Three hits, including a home run. And he drove it to deep right center field. Here's the 1-0 now from Maeda. The fastball misses just low, ball two. Yeah, and his two outs were balls flown to the wall in both left and right field. So a lot better swings last night for the Cubs shortstop. Maeda now just one for seven tonight in throwing a first pitch strike. He does not have the stuff to succeed with that kind of ratio. There's a slider in for a strike. That was the top end of the zone, and it's two and one on Russell. Russell started off the, the series hitting in the five spot, moved down to seven, then down to eight. Now back up to seven tonight with David Ross hitting eight. Maeda into his windup with a slight hesitation as always, and the two on is swung on and hit foul out of play down the left field line. Two and two now on Russell. Game six, Saturday night at Wrigley Field. It'll be Kyle Hendricks and Clayton Kershaw. And game seven, if necessary, would be Sunday night in Chicago and would feature Jake Arrieta and Rich Hill. So it's a two out of three right now between the Cubs and Dodgers for the right to take on the Indians in the World Series. The 2-2, and it's there for strike three call. Slider over the inner half, and no argument for Russell. Well, not a great pitch, actually. Back-to-back -back pitches there with Addison Russell on the 2-1 count, and then the 2-2 two -two count, essentially just kind of hanging sliders. The top of the zone in the middle of the plate, this last one just kind of freezes Addison Russell. A big first out. And three consecutive strikeouts now for Maeda. Here's David Ross, who is in the lineup because he is John Lester's personal catcher. He catches all of Lester's starts. The first pitch, swing and a miss, and a changeup down and away, and it's 0-1. Well, the changeup, he threw a lot in that first inning, all to left-handers. That's the first one he's broken out to a right-handed hitter. Good action on that pitch, good downward movement, well located at the bottom of the zone. Lester Ross, rather, 39 years of age, has announced his retirement effective the end of the season. Here's the 0-1, another changeup, and it misses down and away a ball and a strike. And not only, Ross is more than just John Lester's personal catcher. He had a good year this year. He had 10 homers, drove in 32 as a part-time player. Did a good job behind the plate. Had a good year throwing. Picks off a number, a number of runners. He's going out in style. The 1-1 one -one fastball there for a strike, 1-2. and two. Well, and then all those things you mentioned on the field and behind the scenes, always recognized as one of the consummate pros, one of the guys that especially a lot of these young Cubs kind of look to as a mentor and kind of showing them the way with all his experience. Maeda rocks into the windup and the one-two, a slider in the dirt, two balls and two strikes. He is known affectionately within the clubhouse as Grandpa Rossi. And Rizzo and Bryant and all, all the rest of them, they really congregate around him. And as you said, they seek him out for advice. They seek him out for fun. <laughs> Kind of like the uh, the uncle or father figure on the team, but he enjoys all the, you used the word tomfoolery in a different context earlier tonight, and Ross seems to enjoy it as much as the 22-year-olds do. 
Here's the 2-2 on the way, and it just misses down and away. 93-mile-an-hour fastball, and again, that same expression on the face of Maeda saying, yeah, you got to be kidding me. I think that's a strike. Yeah, borderline pitch again. It was down. It was outside. I think probably the right call, but real close on the corner. The 3-2. And a breaking ball hit hard, but foul down the left field line. Maeda, more than most, would you say, is a guy who needs the calls on the corner to be successful? I do, and especially, I think, at this point of the year, Dan, where I feel like his stuff is a little bit diminished. It's not quite as crisp and as sharp, again, as it was in the first half of the season. So those corners become very important, and I think so far he's been fortunate to get away with some pitches in the heart of the plate, including that last slider that Ross... Pulled foul. He's up to 37 pitches already through an inning and a third. It's one to nothing Cubs, top of the second, as time is requested by Ross. You said it. You felt, and I, I agree with you, that it was probably one base runner away from the bullpen getting up at the top of the first. But then he struck out Baez and Hayward to end the inning. He struck out Russell to begin this inning. And now he's three and two on Ross. And the pitch, and it misses outside. One with a slider. Maeda again appears frustrated. That one did appear to be three, four inches off the plate, though. It, it definitely was. That, that's more of a two-strike when you're not at the three-two count, where it's a chase pitch. Actually, one of the better, from a stuff standpoint, that was one of his better sliders. Better rotation, a little tighter, good downward action. But Ross able to lay off it for the walk. So now the pitcher, John Lester. And Lester was 6 for 59 during the regular season, a 102 average. Runner at first, one out. He had 10 sacrifices. Will he be bunting? He will not in the first pitch as he takes ball one. Joe Madden insists that John Lester is a much better hitter than the numbers suggest. And, and You and I have had that conversation yeah. before. There was a time when he was 0 for his career at a point last year. And we'd, we'd watch him and go, man, looks like he's got a pretty good swing. And that's how Joe Madden feels about him. He definitely likes the way he handles the bat from a bunting standpoint. But here, getting a chance to swing. He bats from the left side and he swings and hits a fly ball to left field. Toll started across laterally. Now will race back to make the catch. Having to go back about 15 or 20 feet in left field. Lester retired for the second out. Ross back to first. Pretty good swing there on a 1-0 breaking ball. He got a pretty good piece of that ball, punching it the other way and chase Kendrick back. But two outs now and Ross still at first base. A little surprised they didn't, especially as good as he handles the bat, and they didn't try to move him along. So now Dexter Fowler, who singled and scored on the Rizzo double back in the first. The Cubs lead the Dodgers 1-0. This series is tied at two ends apiece. Game six comes your way from Wrigley Field Saturday night, a 7 o'clock Eastern Time broadcast start right here on ESPN Radio. Here's the first pitch to Fowler. Swing and a miss and a slider. And you said it before, quite frankly, had a lot of the plate at 84 miles an hour, but Fowler just missed it. And just watching the hitter's reaction, Dexter Fowler kind of smirks and kind of tilts his head like, dang, that's a pitch I should have done more with. Oh, well, but getting away with some right now. The set. And the 0-1 and a fastball stays high, a ball and a strike. That time by design, they climb the ladder. Fowler's been real good at laying off that pitch just above the belt. One and one the count on the Cubs center fielder. By eight of the set and the pitch, and it runs outside. A lot of movement on that fastball, taking it off the corner. Two balls and a strike. So the Dodgers electing not to start Clayton Kershaw tonight, saying the amount of work that he's done over the last week and a half, two weeks, they didn't want to start him on short rest again. So he'll start with an extra day's rest in game six. Two on curveball, a first strike, two and two. As you would think, increases the Dodgers' chances in game five with a rest of Kershaw. Seven. If there is a seven, it's a single. But Dave Roberts said, no, the workload was too much. Kershaw not starting tonight. Maeda, the starter tonight. 2 2. And a swing and a weekly hit ground ball back to the first base side of the mound. Maeda will draw Fowler. And the inning is over. No runs, 
no hits. There was a walk and a man left to the bottom of the second in L.A. The Dodgers coming up trailing one to nothing. This is the National League Championship Series on ESPN Radio, presented by AutoZone. The thought of cold weather is, well, chilling. But not as chilling as the feeling you get when your battery fails on the road on cold, dark nights. That's why AutoZone is your home for tough, duro-ass batteries. They're tested to perform in temperatures 40 below zero and engineered to deliver more power during startup. So no matter how cold it might get, the thought of having a proven tough, duro-ass battery can keep you warm. With our help, you can always switch your car with confidence. What's up, America? Everyone knows Die Hard makes reliable and trustworthy batteries. And now you can get the same quality in the new Die Hard Silver Touring All-Season Tire. Available exclusively at Sears Auto Centers. Rugged and innovative, the Die Hard Silver Touring is the first tire to live up to its name. Buy three Die Hard tires, get one free with installation. See your local Sears Auto Center or SearsAuto.com for details and other great promotions, including Die Hard batteries as low as $99.99. Get the power of Die Hard at Sears Auto Centers. And Wendy, oh, this just in. Wendy's new Swiss Junior Bacon Cheeseburger is now an option for four for four. Let's go live to Switzerland. You can hear the ceremonial Swiss Alpine horn welcoming the new Swiss Junior Bacon Cheeseburger. Now an officer from the Swiss Army is using his knife to cut into a ceremonial block of cheese. There you have it. The deliciously different Swiss Junior Bacon Cheeseburger. Now available for a limited time with four nuggets, fries, and a coke for just four dollars. Stay neutral, Switzerland. And participate in Wendy's for a limited time. Minutes with small fries and drink. Not about the last call. Why you're Switzerland? You know you're in the market for a new car when... Or when... And definitely when... Congratulations on the twins. Luckily, when it comes to auto loans, maybe Federal Credit Union offers competitive rates, a free approval check, and up to 100% financing. So when you know you're ready for a better... Navy Federal is ready to help. Visit NavyFederal.org for more information. Open to everyone in the armed forces, the DOD, and their families. Navy Federal Credit Union, federally insured by NCUA. Championship Series on ESPN Radio. Bottom of the second at Dodger Stadium with Aaron Boone. I'm Dan Silva. The Cubs lead the Dodgers one to nothing. Here for Game Five of the NLCS. Adrian Gonzalez, Yasiel Puig, and Jock Peterson for the Dodgers this inning against John Lester. Gonzalez down to the sixth spot of the order against the left-hander Lester the first time since 2012 that Gonzalez has hit as low as the sixth spot. He often hits fifth against lefties, but not sixth. He's going to show bumps. Pulls the bat back. He swings, and he fouls it off. 0-1. So top to bottom, the game plan is clear. Mess with John Lester. Show bunt, dance around on the bases, take big leads. For some guys, probably drop a bunt down. It's psychological warfare right now here at Dodger Stadium. Here's the 0-1, and a fastball misses just outside on a check swing. By Gonzalez, it's a ball and a strike. Gonzalez obviously not likely to try to bunt for a base hit. Bryant, closer to third, a little more shallow than maybe he normally would be, just in case, as Gonzalez swings and fouls it off. One and two. interviewed Gonzalez before the game, and very well, I might add, and he's still unhappy, and you can't really blame him about the call at the plate last night. Even the Cubs thought it was going to be overruled, and that Gonzalez would be called safe. I wasn't stopping. Under the replay command center back in New York, they saw otherwise as the pitch is inside. And had it been overturned, all of a sudden you've got a one nothing game, the Dodgers take a lead, you've got a struggling offense for the Cubs at the time. If it's overturned, the pitcher hits, so at worst, worst case, you flip the lineup over to the top of the order starting the next inning, so who knows what could have happened had that been overturned. 2-2, Two -two down and away with a cutter there from Lester, and the count is full. Getting loud at Dodger Stadium, it takes a while for the ballpark to fill up. Remember, these are 5 o'clock starts here in a, in a city notorious for traffic issues. 
So it's not quite full at the beginning, but it is virtually full right now. It'll be a sellout, kind of than 54,000 again. Here's the 3-2, and it is strike three called. A fastball at 95, right at the knees for out number one. Pretty good execution there by John Lester as Gonzalez is still beefing with Alfonso Marquez as he heads back. It's a down and away fastball. Actually, a lot of the plate. And looking at the replay, perhaps a ball or so, maybe low, but certainly a borderline pitch. Gonzalez is definitely telling Marquez that he thought that pitch was down and should have been ball four. So one out here in the bottom of the second. One and nothing comes in the bat of his Yasiel Kui. Kui getting the start in right field batting seventh. He was the cleanup hitter in the first game of this series against Lester. But he finds himself in the seventh spot here tonight. Lester went six innings and gave up one run in game one of this series. Here's the 1-0, and this is badly down and in ball two. And strong reaction from Lester there as he kind of snaps his glove, frustrated almost with himself. And he doesn't feel like his command is there yet. And I really think even though the Dodgers haven't made him pay yet or haven't taken advantage on the bases, I think they've at least gotten in the head and gotten Lester a little bit more annoyed early in this game than he otherwise would be. Here's the 2-0. And a swing of the ball hit high in the air to center field, but it's playable for Dexter Fowler. A little bit over to his right to make the grab, and Puig is retired for out number two. In that first game, John Lester gave up a run on four hits through six innings, but there were some hard hit balls. Not the typical Lester command, Joe Madden felt. So when Lester, when his turn came up at the bottom of the sixth, with a runner at second and two down, with the Cubs leading three to one at the time, Joe Madden took him out for a pinch hitter. So Lester only went six. And for some guys, six is like nine. But for Lester, Six isn't great because of the kind of pitcher he is, the kind of year that he's had. He's hoping to go deeper into the ball game tonight. Here's Jock Peterson with two down of the bases empty. One nothing comes to the second. Peterson gets a bunt down. Lester picks it up. Will bounce it to first just in time. Job, Joey. A bit wide and not much on the throw. Like but he got it there just in time to get Peterson and end the inning. It was a close looking play. But he was out by a half step. At the end of two, the Cubs lead one to nothing. This is the National League Championship Series on ESPN Radio, presented by AutoZone. The road to the World Series. Who's going to rise to the occasion this year? Unstoppable drama. I've been teaching organic chemistry for the last 17 years, so I'm pretty good with complex calculations. But when I started thinking about my retirement, I was pretty stumped. Luckily, I have TIAA as my financial partner. Together, we retro-synthetically analyze my financial future, which is organic chem speak for, we figured it out. Your personal success takes a financial partner who values it as much as you do. Learn more at TIAA.org. Opportunity is knocking on your floor. Right now at the Home Depot, get great savings on the latest trends in flooring. Great looks for every room in your home. Wood, vinyl, and tile. Like Portland Stone Ceramic Tile, starting at just 78 cents a square foot. Modern, durable tile that gives you the beautiful, natural look of stone for the price of tile. But whatever you choose, hurry, opportunity, and these savings won't be knocking long. The Home Depot. More saving, more doing. Now through October 30th. Any Jane Doe can tell you that Geico could help you save. But since money talks, we just ask for savings instead. Greetings and some salutations. I'm James Murray. And I never knew my self-worth until Jane switched her car insurance at Geico.com. Those 15 minutes built me up to real savings. Geico's been helping customers save money like me for over 75 years. So take that to the bank. And namaste. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Go. This is a national.
National League Championship Series on ESPN Radio. Top three, one to nothing. The Cubs leading the Dodgers. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. You're listening to the National League Championship Series on ESPN Radio, presented by AutoZone. October baseball plays here. This is the home for Major League Baseball playoffs and World Series. From the Mazda State Street Studio, this is WMVP AM Chicago. Back here in Los Angeles, a one nothing lead for the Cubs going top three. And it'll be Brian Rizzo and Zobrist against Kenta Maeda here this inning. Brian with a fly ball to left field his first time up. Three on the left side. The shift on for the Dodgers. Gonzalez by himself on the right side. As Maeda's first pitch of the inning is a swing and a miss and a curveball. 0-1. What did you see from Lester as he walked off the mound after throwing out Peterson on that bunt attempt for a base hit? Well, he's walking to the first base dugout and made a point to turn his head and stare into the Dodger dugout. Here's the 0-1 and a curveball just outside, a ball and a strike. For a good five, six seconds. It was a long stare after he was able to record that out on, frankly, not that great of a throw, but able uh, enough to record that third out. Here's the 1-1 one, one. on the way. Swing and a miss with a fastball, 1-2. And, and kudos to Jock Peterson. You hear teams talk about it a lot, but it's so counterintuitive as a hitter to say, I'm going to bunt here, but I'm not going to bunt it down the lines or, or to third base where I would normally try to get a hit. I have to bunt it back to the pitcher because I'm banking on him making a mistake. He did it, and it almost worked. 1-2 and fouled straight back by Bryant. <laughs> So Lester's annoyed with the Dodgers for bunting on him and dancing on the bases and taking big leads. And I guess I can see his point of view, but the opposition is trying to exploit a weakness. This isn't about being nice to the guys on the other team. This is about trying to beat the guys on no, the other team. I, I think he's just sticking his chest out and saying, yeah, keep trying. It's not going to work. Yeah. Here's the one-two, and Brian sends it foul out of play right side. I don't think he's looking in saying it's weak. Right. It's, you know... Bush League, what you're doing, I don't think he's suggesting that. I think what he's saying is, keep on trying, it's not going to work. I'm John Lester. So you might have a point there. That yeah. may not work, but if you're the Dodgers, I think you got to keep on trying. Absolutely. One and two the count on Brian. Leading off the third. By Ada. Lines and works. And a swing and a miss as Brian chased a slider down around the ankles for the first down. <laughs> Nice slider there from Maeda. Started that in the zone, broke it down the way. But Dan, I would argue that even though the Dodgers have yet to score yet through two innings, I would say it has worked. I think it's gotten into John Lester's head enough to where it's affected the sharpness of him when he goes to pitch. I don't think he's been locked in yet. I don't think he's been the great John Lester yet. And part of that could be the mental game that the Dodgers are playing with. Here's Anthony Rizzo. And Rizzo first pitch swinging drives the ball to left center field, but it'll hang up long enough for Coles to get into the alley and to make the catch, and that's the second out. Or Kendrick, rather, excuse me, to get into the alley and to make the catch two down. Rizzo with the RBI double back in the first, but denied on a fly ball here. And Maeda seems to be locking it in a little bit here after a bumpy first inning. Yeah, a real nice pitch to put away Bryant with to get the strikeout to start this inning. And now a first pitch with Rizzo. So yeah, I don't think he's been overly sharp yet, but after that one run, he's at least keeping this team down so far. Here's Ben Zobris curveball and it's a strike going one. Zobris walked back in the first. If you're Dave Roberts, if somebody said to him, you know, Kenta Maeda is going to bob and weave his way through five innings, he would take that. If, if the game is still in play, on paper, of course, the pitching matchup favors the Cubs as the fastball misses outside. Ball one. Just like on paper, as great a year as Kyle Hendricks had, and he did. He led the majors in ERA, but on paper with Clayton Kershaw looming, in a game six back at Wrigley, it figures to be advantage Dodgers. 1-1 one, one is low, ball two. Of course, had Kershaw not been hurt, but he pitched just a few more innings to qualify, he easily would have won the ERA. Well, you got a lot of fun things in play in game six and seven. Obviously, Kershaw and his greatness. 
and Rich Hill potentially in a game seven. I think two guys from the left side that match up well against this Cub offense. Two and one the count. Silvers waits and the pitch swung on and bounced foul right side. But then you contrast that with just how dominant the Cubs have been at home this season. 57 wins, I believe, in the regular season at home. That is a huge number. And with two great pitchers in their own right going for them, Hendricks, as you mentioned, and Arietta potentially in a game seven. Two and two the count with two down and the base is empty. Shift on against Silvers. Three on the right side. Maeda has his side. And the pitch. Swing and a miss. He got it with a changeup and a good one. That's five strikeouts through three innings for Kenta Maeda. It is the Cubs, though, with a one to nothing lead as the Dodgers come up at the bottom of the third. You're listening to the National League Championship Series on ESPN Radio, presented by AutoZone. In the playoffs, cue the games on ESPN 1000. We are Wing Trust, proud legacy partners of your Chicago Cubs. Being born and raised in Chicago, we grew up loving our favorite Wing Trust. That's why we are excited to offer another way to reach for them. With our Cubs checking account and debit card, every purchase will have you singing, Go Cubs, Go! Find out more at wintrust.com slash clubs. Banking services provided by Wintrust Community Banks. Chicago Cubs trade and issues with permission. Members at the IC. It's been a long eight months, sports fans. Too long. The football season is here. Are you mad enough to put your sports expertise to the ultimate test? Have fun and make some money? Then listen close. Because your football experience is about to change forever. Join the thousands of players nationwide at MyBookie.net, the industry-leading website offering real-life Vegas odds and player props on all the biggest matchups. This is an online experience like no other. It's easy to get started. Log on to MyBookie online, that's MyBookie, and open your account. For guys on the go, MyBookie features a user-friendly mobile site, We call it adrenaline on demand and if you miss kickoff there's no problem live in-game action is always available at my bookie get in on the action today with my bookie join the thousands of fans nationwide sign up today at my bookie call 844-722-2387 that's 844-722-2387 no deposit necessary terms and conditions apply for entertainment purposes only void where prohibited cbw and hp brought it orchestration to business with the hp elite x3 tablet with windows 10. It combines a PC, tablet, and smartphone, and CDW can activate it so it's ready to meet your mobility needs, which is great unless you're using your X3 at the game. And there's a foul ball coming right at you. That's going to leave more. Power and innovation by HP. IT orchestration by CDW. People who get it. Learn more at cdw.com slash hpinc. National League Championship Series on ESPN Radio. Go in, please. Bottom of the third inning at Dodger Stadium. Big crowd, loud crowd here in Los Angeles. Game five of the NLCS on ESPN Radio. Dave Schultz and Aaron Boone. The Cubs lead the Dodgers. One to nothing in game five of this best of seven, or if you prefer, game one of what is now a best of three between these two teams. 1-0 Chicago as Kenta Maeda will lead it off at the bottom of the third. Maeda hit 123 this year and did hit a home run. That came back in his first start of the season in San Diego way back in April. He'll show bunt, pull the bat back, and take a strike. And it's not just Lester who's impacted by Lester's inability to throw and all this bunting and fake bunting and so forth. Chris Bryant and Anthony Rizzo have added responsibilities. The 0-1 down and in, a ball and a strike. I think Bryant especially with what we've seen so far tonight. Yeah, I mean, that's what makes it hard to execute the play because the corners really take away the bunt. So you've got to have the wherewithal and the willingness to just lay it down back to the pitcher. The 1-1, a swing and a ground ball off the glove of Lester. Bounces to Russell at short and on to first in time. Maeda retired 1-6-3. Ball hit pretty sharp off the bat from Kenta Maeda, who, as you talked about, swings the bat pretty well. And I think Lester at first thought he had it in his glove, but deflected it. We saw that happen last night with Mike Montgomery that led to two runs for the Dodgers. This time, though, 
Madison Russell able to stay on his feet, handle that, and throw out Maeda pretty easily. It's one of those plays where the pitcher is going to make a play on the ball. He can help the situation by deflecting it sometimes. He can hurt the situation by deflecting it, as Mike Montgomery did inadvertently last night. Here's Kike Hernandez in a big swing and a miss at a curveball 0-1. Hernandez probably not at the top of the list of Dodgers that John Lester's thinking about becoming buddies with in the future after all the antics on the base pass by Hernandez in the first inning. Huge leads, dancing around. Here's the 0-1, and it's down and in. A ball and a strike. Ultimately, though, as you pointed out, Aaron, Hernandez may have distracted, but he didn't capitalize. He never actually ran on Lester. Just kind of put the threat of him running in the forefront on every single pitch. One and one the count. One down to the bases empty, bottom three. And the pitch, and a swing of the ball popped up on the right side for Rizzo, the first baseman. And Zobrist over right, or Baez over right beside him. Literally right beside him, a foot away from him. As Rizzo makes the catch, and Baez is that guy on the team where he's like everybody's little brother, and they love him, but it's Javi. Stop it already. Enough already. I have never, I don't know if you have, I've never seen a second baseman do that to a first baseman while he's catching a pop-up before. Well, you've got um, Adrian Beltre and, and Elvis Andrews yeah. in Texas who have all kinds of... Yeah antics and shenanigans going on between them when pop-ups go over the left side in Texas. It's just a turner, and a fastball misses outside, ball one. You know, what complicates matters when it gets to the running game here is the Dodgers don't run. So, you're asking guys that don't run to get out there and actually now try and do it. 1-0 up and away, ball two, and Lester stumbling a little bit in his follow-through after he released the pitch. He gets the ball back from Ross, and now he's looking at the bottom of his right cleat and looking at the mound to see exactly what happened there. He didn't appear to twist an ankle or anything, but he's going to walk it off a little bit. Back up on the rubber right now. one nothing Cubs as we move towards nightfall here in Los Angeles. Lights on, still some blue sky overhead. Here's the 2-0, and it's fouled back by Turner, 2-1. Another picturesque night here at Dodger Stadium. Tweeted last night a picture of the, the view oh. of the towards center field. I think all you wrote was, I love this place. And it is a, it's a pretty cool place to see a baseball game. Lots of celebrities in the house the last three nights. Hoping their Dodgers can take a 3-2 lead to Chicago. 2-1, big swing and a miss by Turner, 2-2. Two two. Uh, after falling behind here, a couple of good fastballs. The first one on the outer half that Turner just couldn't quite get to, just fouled it off, and then that one, more in the center of the plate at 93, just challenged him up in the zone and able to throw it by there to even the count. So Lester, who has set down seven in a row right now ever since the base hit by Seeger back in the first. 2-2, and he bounces in a curveball. 3-2. You think that curveball and his cutter really work well together? Yeah, when he's really on top of his game, he's dominating with that cutter on the inside part of the plate to righties. It really hasn't been much of a factor to this point for him, but when he can cut that fastball in on the hands and also work the four-seamer on the hands, then he'll get swings and misses on the curveball. Even though it's not a nasty, biting curveball, it works as a change of pace and almost like a change-up because guys have to be conscious and a little quicker because they have to respect the ball in because he commands it. Time requested by Turner. So they become out in front of what's kind of an average curveball. Turner looking for his first ever hit off Lester. The 3-2, and he fouls it off third base side. Turner with a strikeout of the first. 0 for 15 against Lester in his career. Carlos Ruiz with a fly out in the first. 0 for 17 in his career against John Lester. Now these are right-handed batters. They're right-handed batters, and, and guys, you're hitting second and fourth in your lineup. I think it just kind of underscores the struggles that this Dodger team has had with left-handed pitching this year. 3-2 again, and a swing and a ground ball in the hole. It's short, and it'll scoot. Under the glove, I believe, or maybe he skipped up over it. Addison Russell sliding on the outfield grass, tried to make the play. I don't know if he has one, even if he comes up with it, and that'll go as an infield hit. 
on an infield. It actually scooted over his glove into the outfield, so it'll be a base hit for Turner. Yeah, he knew he had to hurry, and he, so he tried to kind of slide and pop himself up real quick because he was going to have to get a lot on the throw. But the way Bryant and Addison Russell were way shaded over the pole, that ball was way in the hole, deep into more closer to third base. I don't think they have a play on Turner, even if Russell comes oh, up with an acrobatic play. So two out for Turner, and here's Seeger, who had a base hit back in the first inning. One nothing Cubs. Bottom three. Seeger, a big swing and a foul back going along. Turner now is out there. He's out there in that uncomfortable spot. Two, three steps further out than you would normally be. But again, just holding tight. With that base hit by Turner, he's now reached base in 15 consecutive postseason games. That is a franchise record. Huge lead by Turner. And the 0-1, and Seeger takes the strike in under his hands. 0-2, you touched on it. One of the issues when guys get such a big lead, they're so not used to being out that far that they've got a big lead, but their momentum's actually taking them back to first as the pitch is delivered. Yeah, but once, once you're out there... If he throws over accurately, you're out anyway. So get out there and then just go. Going through the count on Seager. Again, a huge lead by Turner. Now he's going. The pitch outside and no throw from Ross as he bobbled the transfer. And that's a stolen base for Justin Turner. Well, they finally went. And look, I mean, Ross has to be so quick with it. And he understands that, that he tries to just get rid of it so quickly that he bobbles the transfer, but he wasn't going to have a play anyway because the lead was so good and the jump was of quality. So now a runner in scoring position with two down and a healthy lead out at second for Turner. One ball, two strikes, the count on Seeger with the Cubs leading one to nothing. The left-hander sets, eyes the runner. And the pitch. And it is not strike three. Man, oh, man. A cutter from Lester. Every Cub was heading off the field. He started it as at his front hip, but it looked like it broke back over the inside corner. And it definitely looked like it did catch the corner. 88 miles an hour, so not one of his hard cutters and almost had more of a slider feel. He started on that inner half and looked like it did come back to the corner. They don't get the call. Lester was moving off the field. Ross was moving off the field. Joe Madden's not happy right now. And Lester going to do a little bit of work on the mounds in his landing spot. He's been frustrated tonight, but I think he's done a pretty good job keeping that emotion on the inside, whether it's the strike zone or the antics of the Dodgers on the base pass. Here's the 2-2, and it's inside ball three. That one was close, but no doubt that that one was in off the plate. Yeah, that time they went with the four-seam fastball. 94 miles an hour there. Definitely in off the plate in the right call. Boy, I'll tell you, it's noisy here right now. Some Cup fans, but the vast majority, obviously Dodger fans, and they're directing all of their energy at the man on the mound right now. Time is called, and now Ross will head out to the mound, and that'll get him booing. I think this is just Ross knowing his pitcher so well and just... Wanting to give him a beat here, knowing that Lester's frustrated by the missed call. You know, has maybe been at least a little bit distracted by some of the Dodger antics with the bunning and the leads and the bouncing around on the bases. So Ross just kind of slowing things down, understanding that this is a huge pitch to the Dodger rookie. You can hear the chant of Let's Go Dodgers booming around the ballpark. The Cubs won and the Dodgers nothing. A runner in second, two down for the Dodgers. And a full count on the uber-talented young shortstop, Corey Seager. Lester has his side. A look back at the runner in second, and again. And the pitch, swing and a miss. He got him with a fastball down and away. And a ton of emotion from Lester as he comes off the mound at the end of the inning. At the end of three, it's still one to nothing, Chicago. This is the National League Championship Series on ESPN Radio, presented by AutoZone. Is your vehicle a road warrior with 75,000 miles or more? If so, then we've got the perfect motor oil for you. 
Pennzoil Platinum High Mileage with Pure Plus technology. A full synthetic made from natural gas, not crude oil. It's specially formulated to reduce leaks and oil consumption in high mileage vehicles. Make the switch today at your nearest Walmart location and let the performance speak for itself. Progressive presents Mind Flowness with Flow. When you are in the middle of the ocean, on a raft, finding coverage options that fit your budget, as you listen to the ebb and flow of the tide. Your budget, the ebb. Our coverage, the flow. Why tetherball isn't considered a real sport? I'm not. Be at one with your budget with the name your price tool. Visit Progressive.com today. Progressive Casualty oh, Insurance Company and affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. ESPN Radio Sports Center in game. I'm going to catch this in the Mercedes-Benz Studio. NFL Week 7 underway at Lambeau Field in Green Bay. The Packers have a 3-0 lead over the Bears midway through the second quarter. Been a tough year for the Bears at 1-5. And, and quarterback Brian Hoyer moments ago took a hard hit from Clay Matthews and Julius Peppers left holding his left forearm. The only other active Bears quarterback, Matt Barkley, is now warming up. Giants have left kicker Josh Brown home as the team took off for London today in advance of Sunday's game against the Rams. The move comes after documents were released this week where Brown admittedly being repeatedly abusive verbally and physically toward his former wife. Needing a kicker, the Giants reportedly will sign former Bear Robbie Gould, who is catching a flight from Chicago to England. Cubs-Dodgers NLCS series tied at two apiece. Game five after three. Chicago with a 1-0 lead for the fourth inning back to Dodger Stadium with Aaron Boone. Here's Dan Schultz. Kesty, thank you. Uh, showing all kinds of celebrities up on the video scoreboard. Who'd you spot here at the ballpark tonight? Well, we got a little Luke Walt. Shannon Sharp. Tommy Lasorda, as you'd expect, sitting with Bobby Valentine. Larry King is in the house. Larry King in the house. Barry Hart, of course. It's a great Dan Schlumann. <laughs> One nothing. The Cubs lead the Dodgers. Good. Good. <laughs> <laughs> One nothing. The Cubs lead the Dodgers going to the top of the fourth. Don't miss Game Six of this series Saturday night, a seven o'clock Eastern Time broadcast start from Wrigley Field. You can see it on FS1. You can hear it right here on ESPN Radio. As Javier Baez leads off the inning, and a big swing and a miss with a slider from Kenta Maeda. It's 0 and 1. The World Series begins Tuesday night in Cleveland. You can see the World Series on Fox, and you can hear every pitch of the Fall Classic right here on ESPN Radio. Over to on the count on Baez. And a pitch from Maeda down and away with a changeup, missing badly there. And it's a ball and a strike. One run, two hits, no errors for the Cubs. No runs, two hits, no errors for the Dodgers as we open up the top of the fourth inning here in Game 5. Baez, it'll be Hayward and Russell, 5, 6, and 7 in Joe Madden's lineup. Even with a bag of third is Turner. Deep and way in the hole at short is Seeger. There's the 1-1 one -one to Baez, and he'll lay off that slider down and away, and the appeal down to first no swing. 2-1. Say, Dan, his slider is picking up a little bit. Definitely improving here. First inning, first couple of innings, a lot of flat sliders that really hung in the middle of the plate that the Cubs didn't make him pay for enough. He's getting a little sharper as this game goes on. The 2-1. Curveball and a swing and a miss, and Baez is steamed out of the south right now as he went after a pitch well out of the strike zone, and it's 2-2. Two and two. Baez caught looking his first time on by it with five strikeouts through three innings. He's having the best start that he's had in the postseason. This is his third start in October. The Dodgers using 15 different starting pitchers this year because of injuries. The 2-2 and a curveball, and it's a hanger. And Baez hits it hard down the left field line. It's going to be off the base of the wall. Baez on his way to second and in there with a double. And Maeda's fortunate that ball stayed in the park. He sure is. A couple of really good breaking balls. First, the slider for strike one. Then he got a big slow curveball to the outside corner that Baez swung and missed. And with two strikes, he goes back to the curveball and hangs it. And he hits a ringing double off the base of that low fence down the left field line. 
And now a scoring chance here for the bottom of the Cubs order. Jason Hayward is the batter. Hayward, as we mentioned, struggling. Here in October, went over 5 last night. Did have a ground ball that produced a run and advanced a runner from second to third. So he'll be looking for at least a productive out here in this situation. The lead is second to by Baez, and Hayward slams the ball foul down the right side into the first row of seats. And then another breaking ball, another hanging breaking ball there from Kenta Maeda. Now the, after a long at bat to Hayward in his last at bat where he threw him a number of off-speed pitches, change-ups, curveball, slider, before finally finishing him off with a good hard fastball. He starts him off with another breaking ball. Hayward out in front a little bit. A look back at the runner at second of the O on a fastball that was supposed to be high as Ruiz actually stood up and Maeda missed down below the strike zone. Yeah, and because Ruiz had to reach so far for it, he kind of took it to the ground. Maybe a more borderline pitch that had the appearance of missing badly because of missing the spot so much. So it's a ball and a strike. Baez active out at second. And the pitch and a changeup swung on and missed. Hayward chased one in the dirt right there. One and two. Maeda is mixing and needs to mix to be successful. None of his individual four pitches would, would you describe as like plus-plus pitches? It's more the mix that makes him successful? Yeah, but I will say when he's right, his slider's a plus pitch. Yeah. And his curveball is a pitch that can play because he can flip it in there for a strike. His changeup can be effective to lefties, and when he's spotting his fastball, it sets it all up. Here's the one-two, and he hit him. A fastball ran in on Hayward and hit him right in the wallet. He was out in front one and two, tried to crowd him with a fastball, and instead he puts him on. Well, Ruiz, again, kind of stood up, wanting that high, giving that high target, wanting the ball up, but it just runs back and does. Hit him right in the wallet, as you said. So two men on with nobody out for the Cubs here in the fourth inning. And there, there's a little bit of stirring out of that Dodger bullpen right now, and I think it looks like they're going to get somebody up. Josh Fields. And, and I think the Dodger infielders all just kind of making sure they're on the same page. And now Carlos Ruiz looks like he might be calling the trainer out. No, he's just asking for the bunt sign. So they just want to make sure all the infielders know what bunt play they have in order with no outs and runners on first and second. I would be surprised if Addison Russell is bunting in this situation because if he bunts successfully, 